Hey there guys. Uh, I've been uh, welding in the aerospace in the aviation industry for over 10 years now, uh, TIG welding. And uh, grinding tungsten through the years, you end up trying to find a better way of doing things. And the grinding in tungstens is always uh, kind of a pain. Uh, with the conventional stones and the stones wear out and blah blah blah. So I come up with a, um, a grinding setup, a grinder that's totally dedicated for grinding tungstens only. Not not your hunting knives or anything like that. Uh, strictly only for tungstens and uh, not sharpening your pencils. And so um, yeah, I did. Uh, uh, an article on the EAA Experimental Aircraft Association magazine in uh, on the November of uh, 2017 issue had right up in there. The guys wanted me to. Uh, I presented that to them here last uh, uh, Air Venture, and uh, Charlie Becker wanted me to uh, uh, provide uh, pictures, and he wrote up the article on my setup. So. I had a overwhelming request on uh, getting more information on this thing, so I'm posting this uh, YouTube video. I'm not a professional videographer. I do all my own stuff. It's just uh, so if you see any flaws, don't flame me too damn bad. You know, I'm just another guy um, doing finding a uh, better way of doing things. So. Yeah, so this is my setup, and I'll just go through it uh, with you, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So thank you. Okay, this is my setup that I have uh, created for grinding TIG tungstens. It just consists of a, just a cheap ass uh, six inch grinder. I took the stones off and I um, installed a, a series of diamond faced uh, six inch discs on the right hand side. Um, the ones on the left hand side, they're back to back. I'll zoom in here a little bit. And they're a set of two each. Uh, there's two 80 grit back to back here. And I'll uh, zoom in and get the, I got a bushing in between and it's the half inch uh, arbor on this deal. And I have uh, 180 grit in the center. Then I follow up with back-to-back uh, -back 400 grit diamond discs on the right-hand side. So uh, I do have labeled a couple different places, um, uh, aluminum and steel, which means uh, grinding on the left-hand side. If I use uh, tungstens for welding aluminum, I will... I will grind on the left hand side so I'll do the 80 grit the 180 and then follow up with the 400 so the steel is uh, gonna be on the opposite side so they're on the right hand side so tungstens that I use for welding steel is uh, on the right hand side so I'll do the 80 the 180 and then the 400 on the right hand side and I'll demonstrate that I usually grind uh, with the tungstens pointing up either side up and then uh, and then I'll do a follow-up uh, for blunting the tip right against the right hand side there just real lightly to blunt the tip and then um, I will uh, follow up and uh, on the left hand side of the, the grinder I have uh, two uh, stainless steel brushes and uh, dedicated uh, the back to back and so I will grind with the tungsten going uh, facing down on either case and the one on the right hand side is for steel and the one on the left hand side is for tungstens that I've welded for aluminum. The reason why I, I uh, have a designation for uh, aluminum or Actually, it's aluminum or uh, non or ferrous materials, steels, uh, Inconel. Uh, I weld uh, chrome moly, a lot of 4130. Um, it's, it's just main, mainly for uh, cross contamination. Uh, it's, it's so slight, but every little bit helps if you uh, um, 
keep that from cross-contamination. I'm going to go ahead and kind of flip this back down. There's my setup there. So it, it is, uh, I'll turn it, I'll zoom in a little bit. When you uh, grind right on the end uh, with a 400, you get such a real nice fine tungsten um, where you get no lines at all on that. And again, there's my uh, stainless steel setup on uh, brushes on the other side. So I'll, I'll, and that's just pretty much after, after these are designed for taking any uh, precipitation residue off the tungsten. And uh, after you're all done with everything, then you're ready to, ready to grind. So uh, I'll uh, set up that uh, and we'll get ready to go. Okay, I'll go through the operation of grinding uh, tungsten from uh, right out of the box with a blunt tip. This is a 332nd 2% lanthanated. Uh, it's a Wolfram brand. Um, comes from Germany. Highest quality that I've uh, found. And uh, I, I have seen some quality differences or welding uh, differences in uh, characteristics in, in TIG welding between different brand name tungstens. Um, of course, we got to go through the safety stuff, uh, gloves, eye protection, everything like that. I'll just get that mounted up, and we'll go from there. Uh, what's nice about this is that the angles, I have uh, a series of uh, washers in there to take up the, the differences on this uh, longer threaded arbor. And it, it actually sets the, the, the angle for the tungstens themselves. I'll zoom in a little bit here and uh, we'll, we'll, let me get the camera set right like that. I'm going to turn it, kind of doing this hip shot right now, but you'll get the drift. So yeah, each one for uh, uh, steel on the right hand sides of each disc, aluminum is on the left hand side of each disc. And uh, when I get all done, I'll actually cradle it and blunt the tip against that. And then I'll follow up on the other side with and cleaning off any uh, precipitation um, residue that's on the tungsten once you start welding and stuff. So I'll crank the thing up. And don't blink. So I'll do the steel first. One. And if you... If you look, that is such a fine tip. I, well, with the autofocus, let's see if I can zoom on. There it is. It is such a fine tip right there. There are virtually no lines on that tungsten whatsoever. Let's see if we can get a little closer. Not bad. But we still have a point there. so. Um, what I'm going to show you is how I blunt the tips. Uh, you want a little bit of blunt on the tips, most likely, so I'll crank the thing up again. I'm going to walk around it. What I do, I just cl cradle it in my hands, kind of loosely, and just one little bump motion. I just, that's all it takes to get a nice blunt tip. So. Then what I'll do, I'll end up, I'm going to move the camera over a little bit. I'll show what I do for uh, taking the precipitation off. On this, uh, I'll have the tungsten uh, pointing down. I'm going to move my light a little bit. So uh, what I end up doing, I just end up going, just rotate a little bit going down. And that'll take any precipitation uh, residue off, off the tungsten. All it takes is just a few seconds. Um, one note, let me shut this off. One note on using this, um, let me move the camera over, actually turn it back on. It's, it's perfectly safe uh, the way the diamond discs are set up. There's no uh, uh, residue that's uh, flying off uh, where your stone 
uh, erodes away and uh, there's no danger of initial startup in case you have a cracked stone the stone may explode another thing I like about this too uh, you get up and you could actually hit that without even getting your glove caught in in the it just it just cleans off whatever there but if there's um, the my particular uh, disc that I bought I bought them off uh, online uh, some and there are these only cost six bucks a piece so I got uh, um, six dollars on six of them and then uh, the stainless steel wheels uh, side by sides I picked up out of Granger and I can't recall what uh, what the cost of those were but uh, yeah so uh, that's it for my grinding setup I do want to make a note on when you're grinding tungstens that are real small um, in nature like I have a micro torch and if you want to uh, uh, chuck up those in a in a drill um, you can do the same thing with the drill and uh, let me zoom in on here you can do the same operation with the drill but go real slow try to I got this set up and just kind of rotate real slow the faster you go the more your swirl marks are going to go sideways and you want all your grind marks to go on the end so go very very slow as you're grinding so we can actually uh, do an operation here and then we go to the next one real slow and you do get a microfine uh, point on that so I guess uh, that's it for what I want to show you on that so very good thank you Okay, in closing, I just want to thank you all for watching my extremely boring video. Hopefully you picked up a tip or two on TIG preparation or whatever. And uh, just keep welding away. The only way you're going to get better is just weld, weld, weld. So we'll talk to you later. And uh, I don't want really anyone to subscribe. I do want a couple of likes maybe. Hopefully not a dislike. I'm not perfect. So we'll catch you later. Bye now.